All right, thank you. So who here works on a bunch of different projects? Kind of all of this, all of it, okay, awesome. Um, who here thinks that setting up, setting up the development environment on their projects is too difficult? Oh, awesome, awesome. What about um, who wishes it was better documented, their dev environment set up? Okay. Um, and who wished that, that, that whatever documentation you had stayed up to date whenever, whenever anything changed? The, uh, the chuckles I'm taking his hands. And um, who wants to make it dirt simple for new people to join their project? Okay, cool, awesome. So you're in the right place. That's what we're going to talk about today. So uh, I'm a co-founder and chief code whisperer at Corgibytes. Um, I work on a ton of different projects throughout the year. Uh, typically, I'm bouncing in and, in and out of 10 different projects that are going on uh, with different teams at my company. Um, I'm brought in to help out um, because somebody's stuck with something. Um, and I'm pretty busy. It's hard to, it can be hard to get on my calendar. Um, um, and I need a way to like, make sure my de the dev environment on my local box is, is set up pretty easily um, so that I can help teams out when I'm on the go. And the teams I, I work with are, are busy too. And so I'm not the only member at my company that has these challenges. We, we all do. We're all bouncing from project to project. And being able to, being able to get up and running is a challenge. Um, so our solution to that is just this one command, uh, docker compose, docker dash compose up. Um, we've got all of our projects that we work on set up so that um, when we want a dev environment up and running, no matter what the language or framework or set of tools, dependencies, versions, that's the command to get it up and running. We keep, we keep all the tooling behind this up to date um, and it acts as uh, a set of a document, executable documentation for what dependencies are needed, including uh, packages of the OS level. Who likes getting image magic to, to install, install correctly and wishes that was just done once in a script? Yeah. Or, you know, libxml, like getting lib, certain versions of libxml to compile on my Mac is an absolute pain. Um, uh, provisioning and populating a database with seed data so I can run, so I can run my application. Um, and all the different languages and package versions that are needed for the particular project that I'm working on and in a way that doesn't interfere with any of the other projects I'm working on. So keeping everything in an isolated container. So how to, how to accomplish this? Install Docker and Docker Compose on Mac and Windows. This is as easy as just installing um, Docker Desktop. On Linux, it's a little bit more of a manual setup. You can uh, see the URLs there. Uh, so for a quick demo, let's see, switch to this. All right, so this is a very complicated Docker Compose file. Um, this is for a project that I'm working on internally. I'm not gonna try to spin this up because it'll take, take it a little long. We can see here that there are, what's that, like nine different Docker containers that, that I need in order to, act, to fully run this project. Um, there's the database, there's the marketing website, there's the, the front end web app, which is written in React. The marketing website's written in, in Rails. The API's in Rails. Um, the worker process is a custom chat bot that sits on, sits on top of Ruby. The proxy is an Nginx proxy that stitches all these together. Um, Lita is another component of the, of the chat bot, and, and Redis is a database that the chat bot's using. So getting all that up and running, talking to each other all correctly on, the, on my box, just like it would be in production, one command. Um, you can do this for, for more complicated, for more simple projects than that. The, these are three files that I recently added to the ACK project uh, during the hackathon on Sunday. Um, here's the docker compose.yaml file. Um, specifies the directory that we're going to build from. It looks fine on my computer. <laughs> All right. This is, uh, this is the file that specifies the service. We only got one service, and its name is app. Um, this is the docker file. We're in here, we're specify specifying the Perl modules that need to be installed to work with ACK. And then this is an uh, entry point. So this will be first time we boot up the app. It will generate the make file. It'll run the make, it'll run make and then run the test suite. And so let's see that go. If I can type. Um, and you can get a bash session. And there, so you can use your imagination to see what it would look like once you finally get to a command prompt after all the tests run. And then you're able to actually work on that project without having to stress about any of that other setup. Thanks. <laughs>